air about them. She, it's almost like she's floating on the field. And that's a hard take down there on Hinson. Seen Hinson hit the pitch a couple times this evening, a couple times in the second half. She does a nice job with that first touch facing up. Her defender's caught behind her. Looks like a swing and a miss because by the time her defender stepped in and got her foot there. So another corner for Texas, fifth of the evening. Collected by Katz. Air Force leading in the second half with shots as the offside flag is up. Keep it up, Haley. It was Faith Lee trying to track that ball down. Freshman from Oakton, Virginia. Trio of subs up ready to check in for the Falcons. That's a great ball. Texas out shooting Air Force 15 to nine, but Air Force has had quality opportunities. It's Nobles taken down. Benner's just riding on that inside of Nobles. Knocks her off the ball a bit. But it's well done from Nobles to face up and then bring that run inside because she opens herself up to go down the center of the field, center of the goal so she can go herself or pass that ball off if she wasn't taken down. When you mentioned Coach Angela Kelly saying her willingness to play young players, play freshmen. Nobles, the lone freshman out there with this group in the place of McFarland who started the match. Something to keep an eye on for the true freshman Sydney Nobles from South Lake, Texas. Two heads, three, and that one's just too high. Texas trying to play it through the air. And that's a great set piece. Texas knew that Cameron Brooks was going to be on that far side. Grosso steps up and just clips this one to the back post. You see Brooks draw her run out. And she hits it across the six. That's exactly where this ball has to go. It gives her team a chance to get there. And then once again, Nobles is the one getting on the end of it. She's made an impact since she stepped in. She's been on the ball, getting on the end of this set piece. Just gets under it a little bit. Can't get that ball to fall. Oh. Whistle blown. You saw jockeying all the way down the field. Door set. The offender. And that would have been clean shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder, but you see Dorset getting a little handsy, using her arms a little bit more. But looking right here, Jamera wants that ball quick. She's been busy for Air Force. On the ball, on the dribble, and she's trying to find that space, dropping into those pockets. Texas a chance here on the counter. Even numbers. to Dorsett, back out to Grosso. We'll try the give and go with Berg to the back line, back over to Dorsett. Oh, 
And that's two missed touches from Berg, where we normally see her on that ball, able to control it. But she's lost possession twice in about the last 30 seconds to a minute. Junior Haley Berg, Selena, Texas. The Mac Herman preseason trophy watch list nominee. Preseason all Big 12 player. Experience with the U.S. national U18 and 19 teams. 2017, she was the Big 12 freshman of the year. In 2016, it was Sierra Henson. Last year, it was Julia Grosso the co-Big 12 Freshman of the Year from so Texas has had a run with their young players when you make that point of Coach Kelly saying, hey, I'm not afraid to play my young talent if they earn their spot on the pitch. Texas has had the three best in the conference the last three years. Could they have a fourth this year? Berg with a duo of defenders on her. Berg just needs to lay that one off, though. She gets caught doing a bit too much with the footwork there. There's no place to go. If she can lay that one off, an outside back getting forward, that's an option. But taking a look at Carly Allen, I've been very impressed with her presence in the midfield. She's that defensive midfield player. Like I said earlier, Texas asks a lot from those holding midfielders. She's always been an option. She's an outlet. Does a nice job kind of changing the point and helping them maintain possession in that tempo. And you see these players just drenched in sweat, still 96 degrees past 8.30. <laughs> I saw that, that look for you. It was triple digits when we kicked things off. There's a new wrinkle at the NCAA level, there's water breaks that can potentially be instituted throughout the course of a match. The water bulb goes the wet into globe. The, the wet globe, excuse yep. me, that will determine if it is so hot that a stoppage will be taken. You see the hydration break rule. The wet bulb globe, temperature 86 degrees or higher. Don't ask me what goes into that. Well, it is there. The temperature, relative humidity, wind, and cloud cover. We're going to have to get a wet bulb globe specialist up here. Well, I'm surprised that it took this long to get it into the college game because it's part of the NWSL. We see it in the women's professional game, and especially playing in a place like this, it makes me super happy that I went to school in the mountains because <laughs> trying to play in this temperature, I mean, it's an extra wrinkle, especially during these early season games. So I'm not surprised that we're seeing hydration breaks brought into the college game. It's about time. So 96 degrees, but 102 with the humidity. Texas, not afraid of the heat. Keep their offensive heat up. Bird nodding the fifth of the match. And a couple minutes ago, I was just saying how Berg lost about two possessions that we don't normally see from her, but this is great work off the ball. That one is dropped to her by Nobles. She's on, making that run central, just gets a touch. That's a beautiful finish to that far post. Well done from Nobles, though, to hold that ball up, the freshman laying it off in the position so Berg can get that touch and that finish. Saw Berg calling for it, too. You saw that right arm out, filling that space, and a nice job to find her. Also going to take on the whole back line of Air Force. It's one on five right now. She drops it back to Berg. So Berg's second of the match. She started it off in the second minute. Off a of PK. Second coming in the 70th minute. 
Mentioned for Berg. Tied for 10th in goals in the conference last year with sixth. Can she better that? Now an upperclassman. We're starting to see that gap open up for Texas, that space in the midfield. The defensive midfielders dropping a little bit deeper and Allen and then Grosso's a little bit higher than usual. Smith's a little bit higher, Kaylee Smith dropping so they're not getting back and deep where they need to be. So that's allowing Air Force that opportunity to get on the ball. Once again, we see Jamero being an option. She's kind of falling to that back post or at least looking for that slip bomb behind. But Texas did enough to slow him down. Noble's on the ball a lot here in the second half. Back to Allen. All the way back to Curry. Bring it up from the back. Curry going to check in. Sydney Billups going to sit down. Kaylee Smith recently inserted as well, number 21 for Texas. The sophomore midfielder from Lake Forest, California, came on for Sierra Henson. And you're hearing Coach Kelly telling her to pull wide because she wants her to find the gap right here where she's finding the ball. It's opening up that pocket to be able to switch it to the other side. She was pinched to central, and you hear Coach Kelly just telling her to find it wide, come wider. Dorset to Curry. Dorset will swing it into the middle and Berg. Back over to Curry. Quickly dispossessed. But back onto the boot of Emma Regan. Once again, Allen picking that ball up. She's done a great job just holding that midfield and then it spurs the attack once again for Texas. For all the subs we saw in the first half, we've definitely seen a fair amount in this second, but Coach Kelly has kept some of her more veteran players in a little bit longer than I originally expected she would. Grosso forward to Curry. Smith turns it over. Goals in the second, ninth, 24th, 51st, and 70th for Texas. Have seen a couple opportunities. 10 shots for Air Force. Madden had to make a good save in the first half. Crossbar was hit in the second half by Jamero. Something I'm noticing from Texas throughout this whole game is 
One of their weaknesses is crossing at times. That ball pops out and there's a lot of errors in terms of hitting it out of bounds, completely out of play, or maybe not finding that sweet spot right about the penalty mark in between the penalty mark and the six. Those balls are either hit wide, way over the top, not even making it fast, past that first line of defender. So that's one area that I think as this season goes on, they're going to look to improve because they create so much in the midfield. Popping that ball wide has to be another option. Bergen Grosso will sit down. Takora Turner will come on for Berg. First action for number 15, Peyton McGee. The junior from Mansfield, Texas, taking the spot of Julia Grosso. Punch down, met by Nicole Curry. Lexi Romero did a good job getting her foot on that, but one thing that Texas does so well is they forced Romero into a poor angle. So yes, it's a shot, but at that point, Curry's blocking the near post, and that's an easy save from her the way that Regan approached it defensively. Four saves for Nicole Curry, all here in the second half. With Savannah Madden, the junior goalkeeper that started this match. to the arms of Curry. So let's go high level. You look at this team, Texas, you can start front, middle, back, goal keep. Where are they their strongest? Where do they need improvement? I think there's no surprise that they're strongest going forward on that attacking front. I think that's something that is just kind of typical of this team that we've seen the last couple years. This is a strong offensive team. We have some really strong players on the back line, but I think as a whole, defensively as a team, there's definitely moments of opportunity, places they can get better. Not exactly individual defending, but just across the whole field, staying compact as a unit. That's definitely a place that they're going to look to improve as the season goes on. Because we're finding moments where it looks like they're getting beaten and broken down, but it's because they're stretched out as a team, so those seams are opening up to play through. But if they can stay compact defensively, start from the front defending, and then get, bringing that back line higher so they really squeeze the space, they'll have more success and really limit those opportunities, which we've seen as subs have happened and just as, games have got, as this game's gone on in the second half. And we saw it earlier in the first half, just as those minutes started to wind down. Texas, a plus 23 goal differential last year. They scored 39 goals. It's the most since 2007 for this program. They were great here at home. 10, 1 and 0. But a 5, 3 and 1 record in Big 12 play. Texas finished tied for third in the conference. They Losing the Big 12 semifinals against West Virginia. They host, which is always a big deal. I think for most coaches, you would say, what's your first goal? You host, but you see right here, that was the sour taste left in their mouth, the first round exit. But look at that progression to go from plus nine, plus 13, plus 23. The goals go up 10. So like you said, the offense is there. So let's go to the flip side. If there's Point of concern or right now, what is it for Texas that you look at this team and say, okay, this may be their Achilles heel? Yeah, and I just mentioned it. I think it, I wouldn't say that defending would be the Achilles heel. I think it is focus. Because if we look high level, big picture, little breakdowns have happened because of a lack of focus, whether it's a poor pass, a poor touch, losing the ball in your defensive third just because you give it away. That's a lack of focus. Crossing, not even getting it on the, on the field, that's a lack of focus. So it's little things like that. I think if we want to go big, high level, that trickles down and causes other little issues. It's just not staying completely tuned into the game. Punched out by Curry. 
And it's early in the season. I don't expect this team to be completely turned on for 90 minutes, playing the whole game, completely bought in. It happens just with the subs, with players getting more minutes, but that's one thing that I think can limit some of those mistakes and keep them playing at a high level. So Texas starts things off next Thursday here on LHN against Gonzaga, then a trip to cooler climates, Rocky Mountain against Denver and CU, then Stephen F. Austin on the road, and then Texas will have a nice stretch at home. Five matches, A&M, Corpus Christi, Washington, Monmouth, Providence, and Grambling, all here on Longhorn Network across the month of September before they then dip into Big 12 play. Texas pick to finish third in the conference. That's where they finished last year. This game has stretched out completely. We see Air Force getting him behind the back line and then in a snap, it switches to the other end. Taylor Curry to Takora Turner. Right to the arms of the keeper, Katz. Texas will play seven games against 2018 NCAA tournament teams. A lot of those from the conference, Baylor, West Virginia, TCU, Texas Tech, and Kansas all going to the NCAA tournament last year, but Denver and Monmouth both were in the NCAA tournament as well. Mentioned a league leading four preseason, all Big 12 nods. Henson, Berg, Grosso, and Emma Regan. That's the second most in program history, the most since 2007. They returned 62% of their goals, 57% of their assists, 60% of their points. One of 14 teams with multiple players named to the preseason Mac Herman watch list. That's Sierra Henson and Haley Berg. Look at those more challenging opponents in Big 12 play. Texas will start off Big 12 play on the road at Kansas, but they do get TCU, West Virginia, and Texas Tech all here at Mike A. Myers. As you see tonight, both Herman watch list players with goals, Berg with two, Henson with a goal and two assists. <laughs> Those are off puts. rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> but she's been all over the ball. Texas, it feels like offensively starts with those two, can usually finish with those two as well. But also another player, Grosso, that we've seen really key some offense as well and what she can do with the ball on her foot. Yeah, that's where I was speaking when it comes to the, the positives of this team. When you just look at the attacking personnel, but also the personalities of those players and what they bring to the game. All of them really strong 1v1, but you have some creative players, ones who like to run off the ball a little bit more. All are really strong finishers. So it really sets this Texas team apart. And then when you look at more of the supporting roles, those outside players, players deeper in the midfield getting for it as well. There's just a lot of talent, especially on the attacking front which is why being shot of strong defensively is even more important, just so they can take care of those games. Texas, five freshmen. Any of the youngsters that stood out to you? I think tonight the most that we saw for, was from Nobles, but anybody else that stood out to you? Yeah, I would say Sydney Nobles, just from the consistency that we saw when she was in. She was threatening. She's not afraid to get the ball at her feet playing wide. She isn't afraid to come inside with that ball on her foot, looking to lay off. Obviously, we saw the really good connection with Berg on that goal. So she's aware of her surroundings. She knows that she has those players to play off of. So I've been really impressed with Nobles. It's good to see a couple of different players getting minutes, but I think she's consistently threatened and behind. Analytically, you saw the numbers there, what Texas returns percentage-wise, but obviously every unit, every group, every year, unique onto its own. The conversation that we had with Coach Angela Kelly as we now approach just five minutes left in this one, culture. Culture was the big word, said that this group, their unity, their culture, unlike any other group that she has had here, 
right. So that will be the big thing to see. Can that play out on the field? Yeah, and I think that's something that's going to progress as the season goes, as you get into Big 12 play, as you get into postseason. We were talking earlier, looking at just the the results from last year, the record and their Big 12 record. They were doing a lot of that without Grosso and Regan, like we mentioned, who were with Canada for part of that. So that even plays into the culture because those players weren't there for a big block of that conference play. So I think this year, really settling that in in the offseason in the spring, focusing on that as a team, having leaders who are strong on the field, our veteran players who have done their time and just have that chip on their shoulder still from last year. I think you have all the building blocks for what could be a really successful year for Texas. One phrase that stood out to me in our conversation with Coach Kelly, she said sharpening that edge. It was that edge that she felt they didn't have in those matches later in the season, the Big 12 tournament matches, the NCAA match, the ability with that killer instinct that when you have opportunities, no matter what point in the game, to put a team away or deal that blow. So sharpening that edge for this group, a big point of emphasis. I think another thing that stood out to me is we kind of mentioned this earlier, how she really looks to the players to lead this team. And she was just saying how she has their back. She stands behind these players and she'd go to battle for them any day. And I think that says a lot of a, a coach when you really look to your team and your leaders of the team to lift those girls up. And as a coach, if you can truly say you stand behind those players and you would go to battle with them, you'd put yourself out there with them, because I think that's just the impact that these players and especially that leadership and that culture they've developed, I think that's just the impact it's had on her. Eighth season here on the 40 Acres for Angela Kelly, her 20th overall, had that great run at Tennessee from 2000 to 2011. Seat six NCAA Sweet 16s, two SEC Triple Crowns. That's winning the tournament, the regular season as well. Three-time SEC Coach of the Year during her time at Tennessee, but well entrenched here in a different shade of orange. Seeing the fruits of her labors in the recruiting, we've seen that progression. We showed you those numbers really across the last three years, how much better this team has gotten offensively, but some really good pieces in place for Texas heading into this fall. for Texas, that was their seventh of the evening. And that fell right to the foot of Kaylee Smith. She struck it well, didn't miss that one by much, just over the top of the bar. But that's those second opportunities that we see Texas jump on when it comes from corners and set pieces. Maybe they don't get the first one to fall, but they usually have at least a player or two around that second ball. Well, the good thing, Texas, really this evening, they came out and they played like they were shot out of a cannon. It was offensively very aggressive. Stop it. Stop it. it was in the second minute for Berg, the pressure that she put to earn the penalty kick. McFarlane in the ninth, Hinson in the 24th. So Texas with three goals in that opening half. Really, I think it was kind of surprising for Texas. Saw all the substitutions in the first half, but to start the second half, you see all those starters right back out there. So Coach Kelly and their staff using this opportunity, they want to get the work in. Yeah, especially putting Curry back out there, getting her in net behind this team. And we definitely saw how she wants to set up with the start of the second half. But I've been impressed with how the subs have come in. The level hasn't dropped that much for Texas. So with some players getting some minutes for the first time in their career, maybe freshmen stepping in overall. There's definitely a lot to improve on, but I think it's a pretty solid start for this team for the season. Texas will get to learn a lot about themselves going on the road for three matches after the season opener here at home. But then that big stretch of five matches all here across the month of September from September 8th to the 22nd, they will play 
non-conference matches, all of which you can catch here on LHN before heading into conference play. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So Texas will put a period on this one and end the exhibition against Air Force, five, nothing. There was no goal there at the very end. We will take a quick break and be back to wrap this one up. Texas, 5-0 over Air Force. The University of Texas Golf Club, your home in the Hill Country. It's a member experience as big as Texas. Major champions, tour pros, and you can stroll the 18 holes. Play the Spieth Lower 40, a fun six-hole short course. Hit the courts in the biggest indoor tennis facility in Austin. Host your next event in our pavilion or clubhouse. The next time you're in Austin, stay and play in our casitas. The University of Texas Golf Club was founded by Longhorns for Longhorns. the workday gets easier. From the Gulf of Mexico to the hill country of Texas, Ewald Kubota is your Kubota dealer. So a successful night for the preseason ranked 19th team in the country. The Texas Longhorns five in the net against the Air Force Falcons. Berg, McFarland, Hinson, Billups, and Berg again as we take a look at the final stats for the match. Texas 19 shots to 11 for Air Force. Air Force though, Morgan, did have some opportunities. Yeah, it started later in the first half and then they kept that going in the second half. They were pretty dangerous, couldn't get anything on the board to show for it, but to have 11 shots and six on frame, that's pretty dangerous for them. They put Texas under pressure. So you see Coach Kelly in there delivering final words to her team. This is the upcoming schedule for Texas. The season starts next Thursday, 7 Central live here on LHN, then a three-game road trip before hosting A&M Corpus Christi here at home on September 8th. So Berg in the second minute, McFarland in the ninth, Hinson in the 24th, Texas with three in the first half. Billups and Berg score in the second half to make it 5-0 Texas victorious. Come back next Thursday for the season opener against Gonzaga. For Morgan Conklin, Tyler Denning, the rest of our LHN crew saying so long from Austin, Texas wins 5-0. Everybody freeze, everybody freeze. Everybody gotta freeze. As the Longhorns approach the regular season, expectations are high. Texas ranks in the preseason top 10 for the first time since 2010. On the eve of fall camp, the team holds their annual champion's dinner to honor those players with a flawless spring. This 
a D lineman plate right here. I start off with dessert. You know, I like to be sweet first, and then me oh, later. Okay. I put chocolate syrup on top of the ice cream. You can customize it over there all you want, but this is what I do. Here we got rice, chicken. I don't know what this is, but I put it on there. It smells good. We got the salad, the greens. We got to stay healthy. You know, I'm gonna end with the steak. Then we got chicken and waffles. This is just here, just in case I finish the whole thing. I need a little bit more. That's my plate right there, man. Hook. First of all, those of you that did make champion, congratulations. Job well done. Of the 80 eligible guys, 65 were champions. That's 81 percent. Give yourself a. What is training camp for? Training camp is for development. Development. These first 12 to 14 days, okay, are all about development. Development can mean a lot of things. Developing relationships certainly is what uh, training camp is about, okay? Developing chemistry within your unit and trust. And then obviously de developing yourself and your unit and your side of the ball in terms of how well you play. Redefine your best. And that was a big thing this summer, right? Big thing of emptying the tank, of straining, okay? You need to strain and redefine your best and push yourself to what you previously thought was your best. Go past it, Marvin. Young. Some of you guys in here, you've just finished your third offseason in this program. Okay? Some of you have been, it's been your second, some it's obviously been your first. And what you have done for the last three years has helped us to get on the edge of greatness. The edge of elite. We're not there yet, right Chad? As a program, we're not. We're certainly not there as a, as a team, as the 2019 Texas Longhorns, because we don't know anything about us yet. But you have gotten us to the edge of this elite uh, stratosphere. Okay? Now, it's up to us to figure out how do we push through that edge. Let's get it. Ooh. They won. First day of camp, baby. They won the greatness, you know what I'm saying? Stay <laughs> <laughs> Hey, new toys out here to break, baby. <laughs>